becomes dusty and musty and how difficult to maintain our houses and machinery and our own bodies in working order and how easy to let them deteriorate. Is this news to anybody? No. We don't call it the second law, usually, of thermodynamics. But what we do when we think of it in that context and we measure it precisely is prove that there are no exceptions to this, that this is always the way it works. He continues describing it, saying, in fact, all we have to do is nothing, and everything deteriorates, collapses, breaks down, wears out all by itself, and this is what the second law is all about. We buy a new house, and over the years it gets brighter and shinier and uh, <laughs> adds new rooms and gets more ordered. No, it goes the other way, doesn't it? And sometimes winds up looking like this. This is, this is what we observe if we watch long enough, isn't it? But the concept of natural origin says it's going the other way. It's defined, evolution, by Dobjonsky as a directional process that gives rise to increase. Precisely the opposite. In the book Cosmic Evolution, notice the subtitle, The Rise of Complexity in Nature. This is the naturalist description of what's going on. Eric Chison of Harvard is quoted here on the book cover. Along an era of time starting at the Big Bang, Chison depicts cosmic evolution in a wide range of systems particulate, galactic, stellar, planetary, chemical, biological, cultural. Over time, all these systems, be they manifest in worms, human brains, or microchips, become both more complex and more ordered. Everything in the universe is going uphill. But the second law that we observe and have tested and have proven says it goes the other way. And so we have the theory which says it goes uphill and we have the law that says it goes downhill and they're very much in conflict with each other and which one ought to prevail? I think that's a fairly easy question unless you have philosophy dominating your science. Well, when we present this, there's an obvious problem uh, that people see, but there's an answer that we inevitably get on the college campuses that is supposed to answer this dilemma. And that is that the earth is open to the energy of the sun. And we have all of this energy bathing the earth. And with that extra energy, you can over 